Hello and welcome to this quick video on how to implement web views within a MAUI project. So uh, just a couple of uh, a brief overview of what a web view is. So it gives you the ability to embed a website within your application. So as opposed to taking a user and uh, opening, you know, if you've got a contact form on a parent website or you're doing some cross selling, take them into their uh, native browser you can keep them within the application so it displays um, the website within the application so for example on this uh, on this example application um, I I might want to show a really good application for tracking cryptocurrency prices um, I might want to uh, show my Twitter and encourage people to follow a bit like a, a bookmark or where you say uh, please like and subscribe my, to my channel and um, so yeah, they're really useful very very easy to implement I'll, I, now my implementation for this video you can summarize implementation within two minutes because all you're doing is uh, attributing a source um, but if you want to know how I've done this uh, any further than that, then I will quickly go through this video, uh, this uh, sample application that I've just made. So what you can see here on the screen is a two-page a, a two page application. And the first page is basically your home page. And the only thing it contains on here is this collection view. So I simply copied and pasted that. I set the data source. So obviously this is using a binding context. So um, so I used the I put my item source to my list of data, and then I've uh, changed this to a web view, and I put my title and my website description. Uh, what it doesn't cover in here is what I'll show in the video. So how do you make this clickable, and how do you pass the selected item to a new page? So this is this whole page is just a grid with a web view and a button, uh, which is actually a modal page. So if I quickly go over um, how I've implemented this, now I have done dependency injection on just the home page and the home page view model, and not the view uh, details, because really once you do any more than that, you want to be thinking about doing a navigation service gets a little bit more complicated um, to pass objects uh, whilst doing dependency injection. So if we have a look at the actual folder structure and compare that to the MVVM pattern. So I have got three folders, my views, which is the contact page. I've got the view models, which is uh, the um, data. So uh, so for example, the home page view model has got an observable collection, which is just a fancier list. And it this this view model, I'll, oh, I'm jumping ahead here, goes to a base view model, which is all to do with the MVVM pattern. And in the base view model, I'm doing my property change events. So, um, so where was I? So we've got the, uh, we've, we've registered some singletons for um, a singleton means that there's only going to be one one made in this application scope um, a singleton may not be the best but uh, for this you might want to transient or something else but uh, so let's just go with this example and I'll just show you how I've generated so we've got the free folder structure which corres uh, corresponds with the MVVM pattern after that, we want to add, right click and add a new uh, item. And we'd add, make sure it's a MAUI page. And we'd type in home page. And then in the view, view models, we'd right click and we'd add a new class. Now, if you look at the name convention that I've taken here, so home page view model, home page view. So you, can, you don't have to do that. You can obviously just use shorthand like I've done below, which is just VM. Um, 
so just uh, just so you can locate them um, and match them up and I think there are some uh, MVVM frameworks that actually use some form of reflection um, that you don't even need to do the, the next bit they, they will wire them all these pages up for you so at the moment these these this view and the view model don't really know about each other until you add the binding context now because I've registered a um, the view model and the page in dependency right here I can now just use it in the constructor and then assign the, the binding context to the VM so now the, the home page the page itself knows about the view model so that's how we bound those two together now what I would suggest you don't have to use um, observable collections um, you don't you can just use a list or even an array because you know how many if you're using static data you know how many you've got in your, your array um, so I've got a couple of things here that we'll just talk through so we've got on on this page which is the home page we've got a constructor now the constructor is what's called first as the page is loaded and what it's doing here in the constructor is we've got a function or a method a method in C sharp but um, they're interchangeable those words so we've got a, a get data for list and what it does is it just returns an observable collection with this static data which is based on a model that I've made so the model again you'd right click and you'd add a new class and the model really provides the structure to your data so as I've said my data has three elements it's got the URL it's got the title and it's got the description and that's how you'd make the structure for your collection of data now in a real world scenario you probably wouldn't use static data you'd probably be calling an API but you'd still want to use a model to shape that JSON when it does its deserialization you want to shape that back into uh, being usable um, so here we've got we're adding we, uh, when the uh, page is created and constructed we are calling this method we're assigning it to this uh, website list which is this observable collection now um, so that that's how we're getting the data to the screen but what the, what the um, example for the collection view doesn't quite clearly show is it shows how to bind the item but it doesn't show how to uh, click on it make it selectable so because each item has a certain data type we've got this um, property here and what we're doing is on the view in the collection view we've got a selected item which is bound to that in the view model so if I can bring it up side by side I will so this selected website is bound to this so when you are um, making a change what we're doing is we're selecting the item first now there is a selection change command that tells so in here I've got a selection changed command so the selection change is just an I command that calls a command and it call and then it calls an await method which if we go down to the await method the await method is just checking that this is not null to make sure that we don't get any null exception errors but what it's doing firstly is it's checking that it's not null and for this example because I haven't implemented a navigation service we're getting the current page of the application structure and we're just doing a push modal async and we're doing a new 
detail page and we're passing the object through. Now, passing objects may be frowned upon, but I find passing objects quite um, quite a good way of um, um, if you want to populate a detail page, because that object doesn't just contain the URL, it contains any other elements of so the title. Um, so what we're doing there is if we put a breakpoint on it and we click on something, so it's checked to make sure that this is not null. And then we are just getting the current page, the application current page, and we're passing it in to our now because this also uh, on the detail this is also using MVVM we can just check that as it comes in on the actual detail page so now we're on the detail page and we've passed in the object and then we're assigning the object to something within this scope now really if you were happy to, you could actually do a um, a partial class for the home page, and then you wouldn't necessarily need to pass it through. But um, personally, I think this is cleaner to do this. So at the moment, this is null, and then when it comes in, we're just going to populate um, populate the current um, um, selected item within the detail page. So on the detail page, the UI is very simple. On the detail page, we've just got a couple of things. So if we look at what we've got here, this page consists of, of a web view. Now, you don't if you've got if you ever see margin zero 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 zero, you might as well take it out because it's not doing anything. Um so with with regards to margins, they work like this. Here, it goes left, top, right, bottom. So if we wanted to move this over more to the middle, we'd give it some more margin to that uh, to that right side. Um, so this again is just calling now. A lot of people don't like XAML, um, but there are some tools just to tidy your XAML up. I haven't got any of them installed on Visual Studio 2022, but there's some extensions that when you click save, it will just tidy your XAML up. A bit like if you use Visual, Visual Studio Code, and there's some prettier that when you hit save, it, it tidies your, your code up. So this is just using a back command. Um, so if we have a look at the view model for this, We've got a back command. Now this does one thing. It basically it get calls again the application current main page navigation, but it's just a pop modal async. And that just closes the modal. So um so as you can see these these work really really well. Um so if you do want, say for example, I must have changed something here, but let's just run that again. So say for example, you do want to make your own little play application, I would suggest it's a good way to do it. You could um, make your own list of favorite websites. And then say for example, you wanted um, people to go to your Twitter. You could put that on there and ask people to follow you on Twitter. You could, um, Go to Ask Sammy and see what new stuff's on Ask Sammy. Let me take that breakpoint off. Uh, you can even go to Sam Girl and you can even look at some cool crypto application. So, um, yeah, please. Uh, if you did like this video, if you want any more information about MVVM, then please watch the other video. Uh, this isn't necessarily an MVVM video, but this application just happens to follow that pattern. I didn't really talk about the UI for the list view, so I'll probably just quickly go over that. 
Um, so let's close everything and make it full screen. So for the list view, um, it is wrapped in a scroll view. Now, I'm not necessarily sure I really need that, but um, so we've got selected item, which is our list of data. Uh, sorry, our uh, selected item source, which is our list of data. Selected item is what is currently selected, and a selected selection changed is that that's the how we're triggering the event that then checks what the selected item is and then passes that object to the other page. Now we have used some data by uh, some um, compiled bindings here. So what that means is it just makes the application more performant. So we've put the data type for our collection view is that list model type. And therefore we've got all our binding so we can find our items from our data types so that you can you don't need to worry about spelling things wrong because it will tell you if you've got an error because it doesn't exist um, or if you misspell anything then it will tell you so that's why we're using the compiled combined um, bindings data typing it's a bit bit more robust uh, you can imagine a bit like TypeScript it, it sort of uh, makes it a little bit a bit little extra time to make the page so if I just um, change this back to title and um, how we're doing that is we are bringing that in from our namespace so that's in the models folder we're just bringing that class in and we're also doing it page level as well so if we've got any properties at page level um, we can find them from our so we, this is showing everything inside the view model so it's showing the selected websites property but um, we don't want that do we want that websites list so we're also doing that on the X data type for this whole page um, so yeah, that's how easy it is. This uh, this UI is quite simple, really. We've got a grid, which, if you look at it, is your your div, if you will. Now you you don't even really need to do it like this anymore. So this is just saying this grid is uh, four sections. It's got two two columns and two rows, and the frame wraps around the web view and it gives it nice a nice corner radius and we've taken any padding out because if, if you don't the frames are padding by default you see so we've taken that out and I've just added a bit of margin on the uh, right side just to make sure that it's not touching this text and that frame if you look at it even though there's two rows, we've done a grid row span, so it covers those two rows. And then for the second column, um, it de the first item in second column defaults to the first row, so you don't need to go, you don't need to go grid row zero, uh, grid row. So I can't type grid row you don't need to do this you don't need to do this because it defaults it knows that's where it is so this one is in grid row zero which is what you know the first row um, and it's in the column so it's in this place here it's in row zero which is your first row uh, and it's in column one so this is column zero this is column one and as you look here this is in column one, but row one, which means it's at the bottom. So uh, I do like the grid uh, structure in Xamarin Forms. It's a great way to um, provide um, a little, a little bit of planning towards your how your layout should look. Uh, and I've broken this application, so I think that that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please, uh, of course, add any comments. And if you 
comments are saying that you didn't really go through MVVM. The video really wasn't about MVVM, but um, uh, please watch the other video if you're interested in that. Uh, take care and thank you for watching.